hi we are learning direct methods for solving non singular linear systems recall that direct methods give exact solution to a linear system when there is no rounding error involved in it we have learned gaussian elimination method do little factorization method and crude factorization method in our last class in this class we will learn another lu factorization method called cholsky's factorization a matrix a is said to have a cholsky's factorization if there exist a lower triangular matrix l such that a can be written as l into l transpose observe that if l is a lower triangular matrix then l transpose is an upper triangular matrix therefore this form of factorization is indeed a lu factorization also you can observe that the right hand side matrix is a symmetric matrix because we have l into l transpose therefore if you take the transpose of that you again get l into l transpose right therefore cholsky's factorization is possible only for symmetric matrices also we will see that cholsky's factorization exists if the matrix a is a positive definite matrix let us recall from our linear algebra course what is mean by a positive definite matrix a symmetric matrix a is said to be positive definite if x transpose ax is positive for all non zero vectors x you can see from this definition that it is not that easy for us to check whether a given symmetric matrix is positive definite or not right for that you have to take all the non zero vectors and compute the expression x transpose ax and check if it is a positive number that seems to be very difficult therefore we have some equivalent properties which we would have studied in our linear algebra course here we will just recall those properties in the form of a lemma suppose we have a symmetric n cross n matrix a then we say that a is positive definite if and only if all its principal minors are positive that is one equivalent condition for positive definiteness you can see that principal minors can be computed relatively in a easy way therefore this condition is more handy for us to check whether a symmetric matrix is positive definite or not another equivalent condition is that a symmetric matrix a is positive definite if and only if all the eigen values of a are positive again this can also be checked well finding eigen values is little difficult computationally than finding principal minus however this can also be checked we will not get into the proof of this lemma because it is a part of linear algebra course but we will use these properties in our theorem on existence and uniqueness of cholsky's factorization the theorem says that suppose you have an n cross n matrix with real entries note that we will always work with matrices of real entries therefore even if i don't tell this you should keep in mind that we always work with matrices with real entries so we have a matrix n cross n such that it is a symmetric matrix and also it is positive definite then we can always find a lower triangular matrix l such that you can write a as l into l transpose moreover if all the diagonal elements of this lower triangular matrix l are positive then we can say that 
that is the only lower triangular matrix such that A is equal to L into L transpose that is we get a unique Cholsky's factorization. So, when we say Cholsky's factorization it means finding the lower triangular matrix L such that A is equal to L into L transpose. We are imposing this condition that is positive diagonal elements is just to make sure that we have a unique way of obtaining the matrix L. In our computation you will see that all the diagonal elements of the matrix L will appear as L i i square is equal to some number. Therefore, when you take square root you get L i i is equal to square root of that number. Therefore, you may have plus or minus also. So, you have two choices here to be very specific we will always make our mind that we will choose the positive sign for those diagonal elements. This is just to make the algorithm more precise without any ambiguity of what sign we have to choose and in that way the theorem says that you will have a unique such matrix L that is what the statement is. Let us try to prove this theorem. The proof is by induction it means you first prove the theorem for the matrix A which is a 1 cross 1 matrix. Then you assume that the factorization is possible for a k cross k matrix and then prove it for k plus 1 cross k plus 1 matrix. If you do so already you have proved it for 1 cross 1 matrix therefore, it is true for 2 cross 2 matrix. Once it is true for 2 cross 2 matrix then it is true for 3 cross 3 matrix and so on. So, that is the idea of induction therefore, the first step is to prove that a unique factorization is possible when A is a 1 cross 1 matrix. Let us take A as A 1 1 then obviously, you can choose L is equal to root A 1 1 then you can see that A can be written as L into L transpose. Of course, you can also choose minus root A 1 1, but just because we made our mind to pick only the positive sign, we will have plus root A 1 1 here. Otherwise, you can as well take minus here. There is nothing wrong in that. Okay. Therefore, the Cholsky's factorization is true when the matrix A is a 1 cross 1 positive definite matrix. It means A 1 1 should be positive that is how you are getting a real matrix L. Remember that L should be a lower triangular matrix with all its entries as real numbers. Then only we will declare that Cholsky's factorization exists. Now, we will fix our induction hypothesis. As per that we will assume that the Cholsky's factorization holds for any k cross k matrix for some natural number k. Okay. So, we are taking a k and then we are assuming that if A happens to be a k cross k matrix then you can always find a L k such that A can be written as L k into L k transpose unique such L k will exist with all its diagonal elements as positive that is the assumption we are making as per the induction method what we have to prove if we have a matrix which is k plus 1 cross k plus 1 matrix then we have to prove that the Cholsky's factorization exists right. So, let us assume that A is a k plus 1 cross k plus 1 symmetric positive definite matrix. Now, we have to find a L such that A is equal to L into L transpose. Remember, we have assumed that the Cholsky's factorization exists for any k cross k matrix. Therefore, what we will do is 
we will write our matrix A as A k which is the principal sub matrix of order k for A and then we will write the remaining column vector as A and its transpose as A transpose and then the last diagonal element like this. Just to visualize let us take a 3 cross 3 matrix as A 1 1, A 1 2, A 1 3, A 2 1, A 2 2, A 2 3, A 3 1, A 3 2 and A 3 3. So, here k plus 1 is equal to 3 we have taken in this example right. Therefore, our k is 2. So, A k should be the principal sub matrix of A of order 2. It means it should be this matrix. This is your A 2 here and then your column vector small a is taken as this. This is your A. In all our discussions in this chapter, we will always take a vector as a column vector. Therefore, its transpose that is the row vector will always be written as A transpose. right? So, this is what is A transpose. Remember, it is a symmetric matrix. Therefore, this and this will be the same and this and this will be the same. That is A 3 1 will be equal to A 1 3 and A 3 2 is equal to A 2 3. Okay? And then you have this element sitting here. So, this is how we are just splitting A into block wise, where A is the k cross k principal sub matrix of A and this vector A is the column vector at the last column removing the diagonal element that is A k plus 1, A k plus 1. You can observe that A is a symmetric matrix therefore, A k is also a symmetric matrix. Also you can see that A k is a positive definite matrix because A is positive definite by our lemma all its principal minors are positive. In particular, the principal minors of A k are also principal minors of A with lower orders. right? Therefore, they all are also positive. In turn, A k is also a positive definite matrix. This is an observation. Therefore, by our induction hypothesis, you can find the Cholsky's factorization for A k. That is, you can find a unique lower triangular matrix L k such that A k equal to L k into L k transpose, where all the diagonal elements of L k are positive. Right? This is the assumption as per our induction hypothesis. Now, let us see how to construct the Cholsky's factorization for A with the help of the Cholsky's factorization of A k. Let us propose that the Cholsky's factorization of A looks like this matrix, where L k is coming from our Cholsky's factorization of A k and then all these elements are 0 because it is a lower triangular matrix and you have a vector L which is written in the row form therefore, it is L transpose and then this is a number L k plus 1 k plus 1. Now, here we know this right. This is known to us as per our induction hypothesis therefore, we do not need to compute that but we need to compute the vector L and the real number L k plus 1 k plus 1. How we have to find that? We should find these quantities in such a way that A 
is equal to L into L transpose. So, that is our Cholsky's factorization, right. So, we have to find this vector and this real number. How are we going to find this? Let us see. Well, what we can do is you take this the first block of the matrix L, this is the row block and multiply it with the last column of L transpose. That will give you L k into L is equal to, we have to compare that with the corresponding entries of the left hand side matrix which happens to be the vector A. right? So, the vector A is known to us and therefore, we got a lower triangular system with solution as the unknown vector L. Now, how will you find it? Well, you can just use the forward substitution to get the vector L because L k is a lower triangular matrix, you do not need to go for any elimination process. You can simply use the forward substitution to get the vector L provided the matrix L k is invertible. How do we know that the matrix L k is invertible? Well, you can see that from the way we have constructed L k. We have constructed L k such that A k equal to L k into L k transpose. Right? Now, you take the determinant on both sides, you have A k determinant is equal to determinant of L k square. Right? But this is positive because A is a positive definite matrix. Therefore, this is surely non-zero. That is what we can see from the way L k was computed. Therefore, L k is an invertible matrix. So, you will get a unique vector L such that L k L is equal to A, which is a known quantity. So, we obtained this vector L. Now, we need to only find this real number. That is the only part left out for us. Let us see how to find that. Again, what we will do is you take the last row of L and multiply it with the last column of L transpose. That gives us the vector L transpose into L plus L k plus 1 k plus 1 square and that needs to be compared with the corresponding element of the matrix A and that is going to be A k plus 1 k plus 1. right? Now, that gives us L square k plus 1 k plus 1 is equal to A k plus 1 k plus 1 minus L transpose L. Now, from here you may take L k plus 1 k plus 1 is equal to root A k plus 1 k plus 1 minus L transpose into L. Of course, you have to have plus or minus, but we have already made our mind that we will take only the positive sign. Therefore, I will take here only positive sign, but then the question is, is this real? In other words, we have to first justify that is this greater than 0 that is the question. Because remember, in order to say that the Cholsky's factorization exists, you have to find a lower triangular matrix with all its entries as real numbers. Right? Therefore, this number should also be a real number. But it need not be because if this number happens to be negative, then you will have L k plus 1 k plus 1 as a imaginary number. right? Therefore, you have to justify this. How will you justify it? Well, again go back to the form that we are writing. You take determinant of A and that is equal to 
determinant of L into determinant of L transpose, which is nothing but L square, right? What is determinant of L? Determinant of L is determinant of L k into L k plus 1 k plus 1 and that square means this is square and square. Now, determinant of A is nothing but the product of all its eigenvalues, right. Therefore, you can say that the product of all the eigenvalues of A is equal to this is a positive number because we already know that L k exists. It means all its entries are real that is already assumed. Therefore, this is a positive number and this is what we do not know whether it is positive or not. Now, you can see that all the eigenvalues of A are positive. Why? Because A is a positive definite matrix. So, we have stated one equivalent property of positive definite matrix in the last lemma that all its eigenvalues are positive. Therefore, the left hand side is the product of positive numbers therefore, it is positive. That shows that L k plus 1 k plus 1 square is a positive number. Remember just because you are squaring this does not mean it is positive. Say for instance, if L k plus 1 k plus 1 is equal to i then its square is minus 1 right. Therefore, you just cannot directly say that this is a positive number. You have to justify this because we have not yet proved the existence of Cholsky's factorization. In fact, that is what we are trying to justify that this is positive and that comes from this representation. Therefore, we have proved that this is positive and that implies that L k plus 1 k plus 1 is a real number and that proves the Cholsky's factorization exists and also you can see the way we have constructed that the Cholsky's factorization is unique. Why? Because from the induction hypothesis L k is unique right? and then this system has a unique solution L and then finally, this also is a unique representation. Therefore, with all this we can see that our Cholsky's factorization is unique provided that all the diagonal elements sign are fixed as a unique sign either it should be positive or negative. You can see that at every stage of induction you are taking the square root for getting the diagonal element right. There you have two choices you may go for a plus sign or minus sign. So, we made our mind to take only the plus sign in all the steps in that way we have a unique factorization that you have to keep in mind. There is nothing wrong in taking minus in all the steps also that gives a different Cholsky's factorization. Therefore, as such Cholsky's factorization is not unique, but if you fix the diagonal elements sign then it is unique. Okay, let us take an example. Let us take the matrix A as given like this. You can observe directly that it is a symmetric matrix. Also, you can see that it is positive definite. How will you do that? One easy way out is to check all its principal minors are positive. The principal minor of order 1 is 9 for this matrix that is positive. The principal minor of order 2 is 9 into 2 minus 9 that is again 9 right that is also positive and you can also see the determinant of A is positive. Therefore, this is a symmetric and positive definite matrix. Therefore, we can find a unique Cholsky's factorization 
with all the diagonal elements being positive. Let us see how to compute that. There are many ways to compute, but we will just follow the construction procedure we adopted in the previous theorem's proof and try to construct the Cholsky's factorization for this matrix. For that, we have to first compute L1. What is A1? A1 is, is nothing but 9. Therefore, L1 can be taken as 3 or minus 3. Again, I am emphasizing we will always take the positive sign. Therefore, we are taking L1 as 3. So, with that we will go to find what is L2. For that we will write L2 as L1 0 and then L21 L22 right. L1 is 3 therefore, it is 3 0 L21 L22. We have to find what is L21 and L22 such that a 2 which is nothing but 9 3 3 2 equal to 3 0 L 2 1 L 2 2 into 3 L 2 1 0 L 2 2 right and that is going to be equal to 3 times L 2 1 is equal to 3 that implies L 2 1 is equal to 1. Similarly, L 2 1 square plus L 2 2 square is equal to 2 that will again imply that this is going to be L 2 2 square equal to 1 or L 2 2 is equal to 1. Again remember whenever there is a diagonal element we will always get it in terms of the square of that element and then when you take the square root we will always take the positive sign and that gives us L2 as 3 0 1 1 right. Let us now compute L3 which is also the required Cholsky's factorization. For that we will take L as L2 and then L transpose L3 3 and then this is a 0 vector right. That gives us A is equal to L 2 0 L transpose L 3 3 and then its transpose that is L 2 transpose L 0 transpose and L 3 3 right. When you take the first block row with the last column here we get L 2 L is equal to this vector minus 2 3. That gives us L 3 1. Okay. So, remember this is L 3 1, L 3 2 and L 3 3. Right? L 3 1 is equal to minus 2 by 3 and L 3 2 equal to 11 by 3. So, that is what we have here. This is our L 2 and this is the 0 vector and we have L transpose here. Now, we have to find the diagonal element L 3 3. For that, we will multiply this with the last column of L transpose that gives us L transpose L plus L 3 3 square is equal to 23. That gives us L 3 3 square equal to 23 minus 4 by 9 plus 121 by 9. And that 9 into 23 minus this is going to be 82 by 9. And therefore, if you take the square root on both sides and choose the positive sign, we will have L 3 3 equal to root 82 by 9. And that gives us the Cholsky's factorization for the matrix A given like this.
This is not the only way to compute Cholsky's factorization. Recall in the Doolittle case, we computed the Doolittle factorization by direct comparison, right? What we did, we wrote A is equal to L into L transpose. Of course, in Doolittle, all the diagonal elements of L are 1, okay? So, you have to write such an L and then find the other entries of L as well as U. Okay? So, in fact, this was a U there in the Doolittle factorization, but here in Cholsky's factorization, we have to take it as L transpose itself. Now, just like how we did with Doolittle factorization, what we did the right hand side product of two matrices, we just multiplied them and then compared the elements of the right hand side matrix with the corresponding elements of the left hand side matrix and we got all the elements of L and U there. The same idea can be followed in constructing Cholsky's factorization also. You need not go step by step as we did in the last computation. This is uh, to make the proof of the theorem more rigorous, we used it in the form of an induction. Otherwise, you can also go for a direct comparison calculation, which will also lead to a very efficient algorithm. Let us see how these expressions look like. Well, L11 can be directly obtained as root A11. Remember again, we are fixing our sign as plus. That is why we got it. Otherwise, you can also take minus root A11. Now, L22 is obtained by multiplying this row of L with this column of L transpose, right? And that gives L22 as this. Similarly, to get L33, you can multiply this with this and that gives you L33, right? All the diagonal elements are therefore obtained. In general, if your matrix is a n cross n matrix, you can just look at these expressions and try to generalize how this expression will look like for a n cross n matrix. That will be given as L i i is equal to root A i i minus you have the sum starting from k is equal to 1 and goes up to i minus 1, right? So, here it is 3, therefore, it goes up to 2. Similarly, if you are computing the diagonal element at the ith row, it goes up to i minus 1 because i is already there, that is what you are computing. i plus 1 onwards, the entries are 0 because it is a lower triangular matrix, right? Therefore, this will go only up to i minus 1. So, therefore, the diagonal elements are given by this expression. How the non-diagonal elements are obtained? Again, let us see. To get this element, you can just multiply this row with the first column of L transpose and that gives you L21. L31 we have to find. For that, you take this and again you do multiplication with the first column of L transpose. Thus, gives you L31 and how will you get L32? Well, you multiply this with the second column and that gives you L32. Again, you can just observe the expression and try to generalize it for any n cross n symmetric positive definite matrix A and that gives you this expression. Remember, this has to go for each column other than the diagonal element. All the elements after diagonal elements are also not computed. Therefore, j should go from 1, 2 up to i minus 1 and this has to be done for all the rows, right? Therefore, the row index i should go from 1 to n. So, this way also you can compute Cholsky's factorization. So, since we are working with symmetric matrix, Cholsky's factorization is more efficient than Gaussian elimination and the Doolittle or crude factorization because we are making use of the property that A is a symmetric matrix. Therefore, you are only computing L, 
you are not computing u explicitly in that way you gain lot of computational time. Now, how to compare two methods in terms of their computational time? Well, that can be done by counting the number of arithmetic operations involved in these methods. In the next class, we will compare Cholsky's factorization with Gaussian elimination method and see which method is more efficient in terms of the computational time. Well, that will be in terms of how many arithmetic operations are involved in them. This we will do in the next class. Thank you for your attention.